Lesson 17, pricing. Okay, so this will be a pretty practical lesson, actually. We're, we're gonna be talking about um, like discounts, like let's say that you were gonna get like 20% off, you know, some, something in the store, or you had to figure out, you know, you were gonna leave a 15% tip, or you wanted to figure out the GST on, on something, right? So figuring out prices, like actually what you would pay at the till, this is quite often what we're doing here. So. Um, as we go through this, um, again, a couple of things to note, GST. So we're in Alberta. We pay 5% tax on goods and services, right? So that's our goods and services tax. Um, other provinces, they, they pay something called um, HST, so harmonized sales tax. We don't have that in Alberta, but that might also be included if you live somewhere else. Um, yeah. So. You guys can look through this. They show again uh, with the, the steps to, to solve these, right? So that it's a good review, but I think for the sake of time here, and it's, it's gonna be better if I just kind of go through some questions and explain what we're doing along the way here. So oop, let's erase that. Okay, so if we're doing this one, um, it says Walmart sells a DVD player for $59.49. And it says calculate the GST to be paid on the DVD player and then determine the total cost of the DVD player. Um, <laughs> like anyone even has DVD players anymore, but <laughs> let's say that you did. Uh, all right, so if that's, if that's our price, right, we got to figure out the GST. So again, in Alberta, that's 5%, right? So really what we got to do is we got to figure out what 5% of 5949 is. So if I want to figure out what 5% of a number like 5949, well, what do we do there? Well, if you ever want to find a percentage of a number, let's think about what a percentage actually is, right? A percentage, when I write something as 5%, what that really means is five over 100, right? The percentage means like over 100, okay? Now, five over 100 really means like five divided by 100, which would be 0 0.05 if you put that in your calculator, right? Now, we don't need to pull out a calculator every time to divide by 100 though, right? We can change this 5% into a decimal pretty easily. Do you see the, how those are related? 5% and then 0 0.05. The decimal was on the right side and I'm just moving it one, two times to the left. So that'd be 0 0.05, right? Written as a decimal. Now, why am I bringing this up? Is because if we ever wanna find a percentage of a number, we just write it as a decimal. So 0 0.05 and then multiply it by the number. So times 59.49. And that's it. That'll just tell us what 5% of 59.49 is. So take care of your calculator. We'll go 0 0.05 times 59.49. So we get 297. $2.97. Notice that I didn't put all the other uh, uh, decimals there because it was really 2.9745, right? But since we're talking about money, it would really only make sense to call this $2.97, right? The, the, other, the other ones aren't going to make much sense to me right now. So Okay, so that's, so that's what our GST is, right? So that's what we would pay in GST. Now, the second part said, determine the total cost. All right, so if that's how much it is in GST, I have to pay that. So I have to pay the original amount of $59.49, but I also have to pay the GST. So I need to add $2.97 for GST. Okay, so that would just be 59 49 plus two dollars and 97 cents so 62.46 so that would be your total price for that dvd player that's what you pay at the till okay all right alicia needs a new pair of glasses the frames are on sale for 30 percent off the original price of the frames was $229. What is the sale price of the frames before GST? All right, so the reason why it says before GST 
is it just means that we're not going to worry about figuring out um, 30% off and then figure out, you know, at what we what it is after we add the GST to the price. Okay, so it just kind of means we can just ignore that GST part. We just really need to look at 30% off. All right, so if we if we start off with $229, right, that's what it normally would be. If it's 30% off, really what I got to do is I got to figure out what 30% of this is, right? And then take it off, right? Because 30% is going to be like a dollar value, right? So, we can, and then we can subtract that from this. So how do we find a percentage of a number? Well, we change it into a decimal and then we multiply by the number. So, okay, so if I've got 30% of this, well, then I'm going to write it as 0 0.30 or just 0 0.3, right? That, that's all that really is, um, times 229.00 dollars. All right, so then we'll type that in. So that would be 0 0.3. I don't really need to write the zero, do I? So just 0 0.3 times 229. And I don't really need to put the zeros in there either, do I? You could if you want, but don't need it. So equals, so $68 and seven. What does that mean? 68.7. And this was dollars. Something looks a little funny about that. This is saying it's $68 and seven cents. Nope. $68 and really we would just put a zero there, right? This is $68 and 70 cents. Okay. So that's what 30%, that's what 30% would be, right? Now it's 30% off. So, okay, we just need to go $229 minus 68 dollars is equal to, so that would be 229 minus 68.7 or 68.70, doesn't matter. And that is 160.3. So 160.3. And again, that doesn't make much sense, does it? That would be 160.30 if we're talking about money, right? $160.30. All right. Jim owns a leather shop. He buys leather jackets from the manufacturer for $250 each. Then he marks the jacket up 75% so he can sell them in his store for a profit. What is the price of the jackets in Jim's store? Okay, so what, what they're saying here is if he's selling jackets, right, then he buys them for $250 and then he increases the price of that jacket by 75% so that he can actually make some money, right? Because if he just, let's say, bought the jackets for 250 and then sold them for 250, how much money would he make? Well, he wouldn't make any money, right? So he needs to mark these things up, right? He needs to actually sell it for more than what he bought it for, okay? So in this case, this is actually really similar to the question above, right? Because these were saying these were 30% off, right? So that was subtracting. If we're marking this thing up by 75%, that just means we need to add 75%. So step number one, we got to figure out what 75% of 250 is. So how do we find a percentage of a number? Well, we write the percentage as a decimal and hopefully you're getting okay with this. This would be the same thing as 0 0.75, right? That's just that number written after the decimal. And then it's that times 250. So that would be 0 0.75 times 250 is equal to 187.5, so $187.50. All right, so I'm done. He, he sells the jackets for $187.50. <laughs> he's not very good at math, so he's gonna, go, he's gonna go broke pretty fast, right? So this can't be it, right? He's not selling them for $187.50 because he paid more than that when he bought it, right? He's marking it up by this amount, right? 
So what that means is that he's adding, he's tacking this on. So it's going to be two hundred and fifty dollars, like what he paid for it, but he's going to add one hundred and eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Okay, because that was that was seventy-five percent, right? That's the same. Like that dollar value is seventy-five percent of two fifty. Okay, so that is equal to. So we'll say I I already have it in my calculator already. So why don't I actually just, instead of typing all out again, why don't I just go with this number that's stored in my calculator already and then just go plus 250. Just save time that way. So that's 437.50. Uh, so 437.50. That makes sense, right? He's selling it for more than what he bought it for now. <laughs> He's gonna make some money. All right, so in these examples, we were figuring out, you know, they gave us the percent increase and in the deal and all that kind of stuff. Now, what this is gonna be doing is actually just calculating that percentage. We're just gonna kind of go backwards from that. So a good place to start on this. Let's say everyone kind of remembers this one. Let's say that you got um, 12 out of, out of uh, 30. Well, let's say you did better than that. Let's say we got 12 out of 20 on the test. Okay, so 12 out of 20 on the test, and you want to figure out what percentage you got. What was the, what, what, you know, so what's going to show up in, in power school? Well, what would you do? Well, you would go 12 divided by 20 and then times 100, right? So if I was figuring out my percentage on that one, I would just go um, 12 divided by 20. So you get 0 0.6, right? That's equal to 0 0.6. And then technically you would go times 100%, right? Which would be 60%. But did you really need to do that times 100%? Like, couldn't you have done that in your head? Right, I could see that right there that that was 60%. So whenever I'm figuring out percentages and I see like that, I'm like, okay, that's 60. I'm just looking at the numbers after the decimal. If you really want to, that's fine. You can multiply by 100, but you should kind of get good at just seeing the percentage just from looking at, you know, it's the numbers after the decimal, okay? but. Either way there. So let's let's jump into some questions here. All right, so a store owner purchases mountain bikes from a from the manufacturer for $132.95. He sells the bikes for uh, $217.99. What is the percent markup for the bikes? All right. So very first thing, we got to figure out how much extra he actually um, sold them for, right? So he bought them for this. He sold them for that. How much did he tack on there? What what was the extra money that he put on? So to find that out, really, what we got to do here is we got to go two seventeen ninety nine, right? That amount, and we're going to subtract the initial amount. Okay, so that'll be one hundred and thirty two dollars and ninety five cents. Okay, so that's going to be two seventeen. 99 minus 132.95 is 85 dollars and four cents so 85 dollars and four cents so what that means is that he added on an extra 85 dollars and four cents to his original 132.95 to get this right okay so now that we know that that's the that's the dollar value for how much he marked up his bikes. Now we just gotta figure out what that is as a percentage. So the same way that you would have figured out how what you got on a test, if you had 12 and a 20 on a test, you would just go 12 divided by 20. We're gonna do the same thing and say, okay, this $85.04 out of the original, right? Out of our original, what it was worth. So $132.95. Right, we're gonna divide those and then we're gonna multiply by 100, but you probably shouldn't need to again, right? So let's do that. So if we go, if we go 8504, so it's already in my calculator, right? So I'll just leave it like that. And then I'm just gonna go divided by and then 132.95 equals. So I get 0 0.63 and then like a whole bunch of decimals. I don't need any of those. I'm just really looking at the first two so that would be 0 
And then do you see how that three would actually round up because the nine on the other side of it, right? This is really 0 0.64, right? So that's what this is. This was 0 0.64. Now we shouldn't be running for our calculator at this point to multiply by 100. That would just move the decimal place over twice, right? That'd be the same thing. So if I go that times 100%, that'd be the same thing as 64%, okay? So he marked up his bikes by 64%. Okay, number two, the cost of dog food has increased in the last three months. Uh, a bag used to cost $17.99, but now the same size bag costs $19.49. What is the percent markup on the food? All right, so again, let's figure out what the difference between those were. Like we wanna figure out the dollar value that those things actually went up by. So same as last question, we're gonna go $19.49. Minus seventeen ninety nine. Okay, so we get nineteen forty nine minus seventeen ninety nine. So we get a dollar fifty. So one point five or one point five zero. So a dollar fifty. Um, okay, so now we want to know what what percentage $1.50 is of the original amount. So we can know how much it was, like what percentage it was marked up by. Okay, so that'll be 150 or 1.5 or 1.50 dollars divided by 17.99 and then technically times 100%. So that would be, I've already got it in there, 1.5. So we'll just go that divided by 17.99 equals. So I can see from here too, the answer is actually just gonna be 8%, right? Cause this would be 0 0.083, so 0 0.08, and then it would round back down to the eight, right? So this would be 0 0.08 times 100. And then can you see again, like you would just move the decimal place over one, two times. So it'd be like 8.0 or just eight. So, so that's it. So that's just equal to 8%. So it's gone up 8% in price. Amber Lee bought a camera on sale for $249.99. The camera originally sells for $399.99. What was the percent marked down on the camera? All right, so this would be, we'd be calculating here, you know, like if you were in the store, what would it say? It would say like, you know, 15% off or 20% off or something like that, right? We're actually, we're gonna calculate what the percent off was here. So we'll do the same thing, right? We're gonna go 399, we, we gotta find the difference between them, right? To figure out how much money we actually saved. So this would be 399.99 dollars minus, Two forty nine ninety nine. Okay, so what did we save there? So that's going to be three ninety nine ninety nine minus two forty nine ninety nine. So one hundred and fifty dollars off. So that's a good deal, right? So we saved one hundred and fifty dollars. Now, what was that as a percentage of the original price, right? So. She bought it on sale for this, right? But the original price was this. So we wanna go $150 of the original price. So again, we're gonna go 150 divided by our total, right? 399.99 and then times 100%. So that would be, I've already got 150 in there. So I'll just go 150 divided by 399.99. So we get 0 0.375. So 0 0.38, right? That five would round that up. So 0 0.38. And then that times 100 is equal to 38%. Okay, number four is really similar. So you know what? I'm going to skip past this one. We'll, we'll move on. 
Okay, so which one's the better price, you know, sales promotions? So, so here, here are different types of promotions that you might see, right? You might see a buy one, get one free type of a promotion. You might get a buy one, get one 50% off promotion. Um, sometimes you just get like sales as percentages, like what we've done before, right? So it was like a 10% off or 50% off or something. Um, sometimes you'll see like a no GST sale. So you just won't pay the 5%, right? And then sometimes you get a points program and sometimes, especially nowadays, these can be, these are, these are more common where, uh, stores want you to, to go with them. So they want you to try to get a whole bunch of points through their program. A lot of these things will be online, right? So you get like an online points program. You show them how many points you have or you there, they scan maybe like a, your card or something to see how many points you have. They're all kind of different though. So you have to kind of read through what their, what their company uh, does. But so what we're going to do is actually just kind of think about what the better deal is when we're, when we're doing these. So let's jump into some examples. All right. So we have two local, two, pretty out to speak here. Two local restaurants have promotions for families. So restaurant A uh, has two kids eat for free, uh, or eat free from the kids menu. Kids meals usually cost $6. Additional kids meals must be paid in full. Adult meals are $12.99. This promotion is on Monday evenings only. And restaurant B has all children eat for free. Adult meals are $16.99. And this promotion is valid Monday to Friday. The Smith family has two adult and three children. Which restaurant should they go to? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have to break this one down. So let's let's break this down into restaurant A and restaurant B. Okay. So let's go restaurant A. Um, so now restaurant A, let's do for the adults. Okay. So let's figure out the adults first. All right. So the adults, so we have two adults and three children, right? So for the two adults in restaurant A, let's just say for now that it is Monday evening, right? We're just going to go with like this promotion for the Monday evenings. Um, then the adults are going to pay $12.99 each, right? So this is going to be $12.99. dollars times two. Okay. So 12.99 times two. So $25 and 98 cents. All right. So they're going to pay that. I'm going to put a box around this cause I'm going to add this up in the end. And now let's do for the kids, right? So they would pay, well, how many, how many are we going to have to pay here? So it says, the two kids eat for free from the kids menu, which is usually $6. Um, but any additional meals are going to be uh, paid in full, right? So two of the kids are free. I only have to pay for one more kid for $6, right? So this is going to be for the kids. We're going to just have one, one kid times $6 or just $6. Didn't really need that. Okay. So that's just going to be $6. This might seem like extra work. All right. So if I'm doing that restaurant a here, then that's just going to be $25, 25 dollars, 25 $6. Okay. So that's going to be equal to 31 98. All right. So that's restaurant a. So now let's figure out restaurant B. Okay, so in restaurant B, it says all the children eat for free. So I don't even have to worry about the, the children now, right? And the adult meals are $16.99. So this is just going to be $16.99 times, well, for both adults now, right? $16.99 times two. So that's going to be $33.98. 
And that's it. I don't really have anything else to do because the kids ate for free, right? So which of these is the better deal? Well, part of it's kind of a trick question here, right? Because the restaurant A is the better deal, right? But there was these uh, promotions. It was only for Monday evenings, right? So if it wasn't Monday evening, then we would have had to have paid an extra, well, $12, right? We would have had to have bought two more kids meals. So this one would have been thirty-one ninety-eight. Oh, 90. 31 98 plus 12 right so this would have been 43 dollars and 98 cents any other time right so restaurant a is the better deal but only if it's monday evening okay if it's any other time of day then it's going to be it's going to be these ones right so so it depends in short all right so jason is a con or jason the contractor is putting the finishing touches on the new home. He needs to put uh, light bulbs in all the light fixtures. He requires 18 fluorescent light bulbs to finish the job. Home Depot, se Depot sells a, a case of 12 for $56.94 and a case of 36 for $77.88. All right, so first off, this should look kind of familiar. This is our first lesson for the, the money um, unit well, where we can figure out how much it was per bulb, right? Why, why don't we do that? Let's say, so this is going to be um, $56.94 per 12 bulbs. Call that B. Okay, so if I want to find out what the unit rate is, that's going to be $56.94 divided by 12. Okay, so $56.94 divided by 12 is $4.75. So $4.75 per bulb, okay? Now the other one was $77.88 for 36 bulbs, okay? So that would be $77.88 divided by 36. So we get 2.16. So it's going to be two dollars and sixteen cents per bulb. Okay, that was per bulb. All right, so the purple one's definitely a better deal here, right? Um, but the only thing we have to think about here, though, is he only needs eighteen. Okay, so if we think about the eighteen part of this, right? If he if he goes there and he only and one case is twelve, then he's definitely going to have to buy two cases, right? So if he needs two cases, because that's all they come in, they don't, they don't, they won't let you take half of a case, right? Then he's going to have to have two cases. So the red one here would be two cases, and that would be twelve. No, not twelve. Sorry, that would be two times fifty-six ninety-four. So two times. 56.94 so 113.88 so 113 dollars and 88 cents right so he would have to pay that and in purple here it's 36 for 77 dollars and 88 cents right so in that case he would only actually have to pay 77 dollars and 88 cents so when this question is saying, which is the better deal? Well, it's kind of, it's when you start like actually thinking about, you know, what your needs are, because the purple one was definitely the better deal per bulb, right? Because these were 216 a bulb, these were 475 a bulb. But if I, you know, can't store all the other bulbs somewhere, or I just really don't need those and they're just gonna, you know, get lost or something, then it's probably gonna be better to just spend the, uh, Actually, sorry, yeah, this would be the better deal either way, right? You'd still just want to buy this case. The only reason that you, you know, might want to do the, the red scenario here is if you just couldn't store the other bulbs and you didn't want them to go to waste or something, right? Or you just, yeah, so really this is going to be your better deal in the end. All right, and for this last one, we're just going to kind of chat about these deals. So it says, 
A truck dealership has a sales promotion on right now. It says buy a new vehicle and get a free three day trip to Las Vegas. All right, how is this promotion good and bad for the consumer? All right, so the good part of it is that, well, they get a free trip, right? They get to go for a trip to Las Vegas. Um, the bad part is that, well, these trips, especially to Las Vegas, I'm gonna spend way more money in Las Vegas, right? <laughs> Everybody does, right? That's why trips, trips to Las Vegas are usually pretty cheap is because they just wanna get you down there. You spend a lot of money when you're in Vegas. Um, okay, so that's potentially a tough part. Um, you, you might have to take this trip at a specific time. Sometimes they might say, get a free trip to Las Vegas, but who knows when, right? They might, that might be at a specific time when you're working or, you know, some other thing is happening. You might not be able to go anyway. Um, and then the other part that is a little shifty is if the price of the vehicle was, you know, let's say $25,000 and they gave you a free trip right? Maybe they had it on sale, you know, maybe, maybe the price of the vehicle, they actually just put that up to like, you know, 26,000. They actually just included it in the price of the vehicle. So you're actually just paying more for the vehicle in the end, right? Even though like, Ooh, I get like a trip to Vegas, but you've actually kind of paid for it in the extra money that you paid for the, uh, for the vehicle, right? That was probably way too cheap for a truck. That'd be, that'd be a nice car anyway. Yeah. All right. How is this promotion good or bad for the dealership? Well, they bring in more customers, obviously. They're gonna bring in more people. Um, yeah, it's, hopefully they're hoping that, you know, people will tell their friends and bring in, bring in free advertising. Um, how it's bad, the dealership will have to cover the cost of the trip, maybe, if they didn't just include it in the price of the vehicle. And, uh, and yeah, that's probably it.